Alrighty, so welcome guys to another vlog or another special series for um, this vlog channel. So this is, I have Rob Stewart with me. Uh, he has his own big channel in this industry as well. And he's a very, very knowledgeable guy. I'll let you introduce yourself uh, a little bit more in a better way. Okay. But I've been watching your videos for a while. Uh, I know you have quite a big channel and as far as dry skin, psoriasis, eczema, and all the above. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, I started my YouTube channel, uh, I think like six or seven years ago. Um, and it was as a result of going through what everyone else is going through right now. I had um, a long bout with eczema, dermatitis. At one point, I also got psoriasis and rosacea. Um, went through the rabbit hole of trying to naturally heal myself. Um, first went to doctors and of course that went horrible. Uh, and then I found my path and was able to heal my skin. And so I put up a YouTube channel um, just to kind of show my path and, and where I was at and give people a little data and a little, hopefully, inspiration. Um, and it blew and, up. I mean, I see you your channel has quite a bit of subscribers, people viewing, commenting. That's awesome. Yeah. So eight, eight years into it, um, sitting at well over 100,000 subscribers. Um, and, you know, this has become my full time career helping people heal their skin. Um, with me, um, that's, it's just been a very organic kind of, you know, process. Now throughout your channel, I've, I've watched uh, videos here and there. I saw you were a big into vegan at first and then you switched to the full meat diet. And lately I think you were talking about the keto diet. So this is a big question in the, in the community. And I get a lot of them in the comments as well on my channel asking, so like, which one is it? What do you do? Like, which one do you stick to? Like, is exactly. there a specific psoriasis diet that you want to try? Like, yeah, for sure. And I think this is the biggest mistake people make is they'll watch a video of mine or yours or someone else out there and they'll just copy what we do. Yeah. Um, and truly when I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, um, the ones who heal their skin have the most success. We figure out two things. One, customized diet that works for them as an individual. A lot of people, um, there are similarities, um, but the two main diets that work is one that is high carb, low fat, keeps the fat under 20%. For people that run well on carbohydrates, do well with fiber, that diet does very good. You're you saying high carb, and I see a lot of comments, and a lot of researchers says, cut the carbs out. Yeah, so that's one group of people do well with high carb. The other group of people, will be killed on high carb and do well on high fat, high protein. Um, so where, the only way to know is really to test for like you have, a month you or have two. To test and you have to experiment and you have to be someone who is willing to be patient and yeah. feel, feel into things and read the data and not be compromised by a desire to um, want to be like a vegan Instagrammer or be like a carnivore diet guru. You yeah. got to find your own path. Um, from my experience, I started vegan um, and that did me really well. It led to some major issues for me. And I've been lucky enough to work with almost over a thousand people at this point. And in my early days, it was all vegan, all cleansing, all high carb, low fat, very focused on detoxification, um, green juices, things like that. And the clients that were healed from that have almost at about 95% come back to me later and said, hey, things are starting to not be great. Luckily, my skin's not thrashed yet, but I need to make an adjustment. So at this point, kind of what I promote and what I'm doing is what I call a keto-ish carnivore diet. I focus on um, bioavailable fats and proteins, um, and I eat the carbohydrates and the plant foods that I know work perfectly for me as an individual right and i stay pretty disciplined with with my eating um do i have clients that eat a lot more plant foods and a higher carb ratio than i do of course do i also have clients who eat only beef and salt and green juice here and there yeah so it's it's a wide variety the take home is customize and take the time to find the diet that works for you and also the autonomic nervous system response is what's responsible for our skin having the inflammatory response that it has. So to address that directly on a daily basis through meditation, breath work, maybe some ice baths on a weekly basis, 
those two things are really what separates the people that heal and stay healed from those who kind of just spin their wheels and never get to that place where they're solidified with healthy skin. Okay. So based on everything you just said, I want you to like, I'm going to give you a quick list of what things that I do. Yeah. And I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to it. And then you tell me based on what you hear, is this something that you've implemented in your past when you're trying to heal? So cool. obviously exercise every day. That's a given. Given. Um, Drink lots of water, eat clean food, right? Like yeah. Yeah. Whether, whether you're eating like meats or vegan, as long as it's clean food, not processed stuff, that's already a plus. That's where to start. Um, I try to do cold showers and the breathing techniques and saunas uh, as much as I can. Yep. Um, I hear a lot of people that say negative things about it. Some people say really positive things about it. So uh, that's another thing I implemented. And then aside from that, stress relief. That's the biggest one for me. Big time. So whichever way you can think about it, and that can come from different forms. Um, I've even, and this is some topic that I was considering if I want to talk about or not at all, but cannabis. Yeah, that's a great topic. You know, yeah. and I think I'll go into that just a little bit because that's kind of the one that is most controversial that you've brought up so far. All the other stuff you're dead on, all that has to be done. The diet, the lifestyle. Yeah. Um, with cannabis, you know, the issue itself when people – use cannabis and it affects their skin negatively, doesn't come from the nutrients or the alchemization of the THC and what's in it. It comes yeah. from the amount of heat and the smoke that affects your esophagus, right. your throat, your mouth, your lungs. And you know that's a huge part of your central nervous system is your lungs. And if you're kind of beating those guys up, that's just another thing that you have to heal on top it of it. one but ruining the other. Exactly. So I always tell my clients who need that medicine, either for anxiety or for their gut or for sleep, make sure you're getting it in a form that doesn't cause too much heat in your body and edibles. or yeah, edibles, um, oils, topical solves, um, even, you know, and not to be too straightforward, but even a nice glass bong with ice in it is going to be a lot that's better than not, you know what that's something that we split. need to address because this thing actually could help if you do it in the right forms and yeah. I've, everything in moderation really like uh there's many things drugs out there that are really good for you if you do them in moderation yeah like, not promoting to do drugs on this channel that's not the point the, no. the idea is just to do the right amount so it actually helps you okay. exactly now another topic that's a big one right now and i'm sure uh, you're going to cover that in your channel as well is a lot of people are worried that because we have this autoimmune disease inside of us that we are more so affected by what's going on in the world right now yeah crazy time with uh, the coronavirus um and you know the the people who are speaking the scientists speaking about it have pretty unequivocally said if you have some immune issue you got to be very careful and i, I don't think it's um, reason for us as skin health sufferers to freak out, but I think we should be conservative, you know, do some, do some deep introspection and use this time social distancing to, to work on yourself. You know, you that can the perfect it's really diet. easy yeah. to eat clean. It's really easy to make sure that your hygiene is on point. Yeah. It's really easy to be disciplined when you don't have work or social activities or shopping or all these other distractions. So I, I think that the message for me is be concerned, be conservative, do the things you're supposed to do to keep yourself safe. But also I, I like to flip things always into a positive. Use it, man. Time off from work, time to focus on diet, time to cleanse. You just get busy working and, and no, no pressure from friends. They can like ask you to come eat or whatever. Like you're just sitting at home working yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. So those are like the main topics that come to my head when like recently from all the comments they've had, yeah. uh, there are people that are asking for like, if there's specific exercises that you do every day, like when you wake up, when you like mm -hmm. doing exercise in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, I can kind of give you guys a, a overview of what I do personally on a daily basis physically. And then also kind of what my clients do when I, what I, help people organize within themselves so that they have kind of a baseline of things. Um, as you guys know, most of this comes back to your nervous system and your lymphatic system. Right. So daily movement in whatever form is an absolute must. No person I've ever worked with who's healed 
didn't adopt some type of daily physical activity. The cool thing is that it doesn't have to be what I do. Um, what I do is I like to hit the gym anywhere from three to five times a week. Um, it depends on how long I'm in the gym, what program I'm running. Right now I'm doing, um, I work with Mino Henselman, and so I do what's called um, high volume training, um, but more so it's volume in how many days in a row you're doing similar movements, kind of a very, um, it's kind of a new school idea. So I hit the gym only about 45 minutes. I do full body workouts and I do them daily, five days a week right now. Um, my other movement, this is where you can have fun. Ride bike, rollerblade. I love dancing. So any chance I have to, to shake my stuff, I'll do it. Um, yoga. Um, walking is probably the most underrated thing you can do for your health. Long, really comfortable walks, hiking in nature, walks after dinner. Now, what um, happens when, like, we, we have the luxury, like, you know, so entrepreneurs, whatnot, of working ourselves, we can do whatever we want. But what about the guys that are working in a full-time job, have a family at home, they have to make sure the kids are ready to go, right? They yeah. don't have the luxury to go on the bike and go on an hour stroll or go dancing, right? Very true. Very true. I, I say if you have a family, involve them. You know, if you're, and this, this might sound critical or judgmental, I don't mean it to be. I, I hope it's more of a wake-up call. But if you're a father or a mother and you have a family and you are responsible for all of them, you better be teaching them to move their bodies and to eat well or you're not doing your job. That's true. Um, and I don't take the excuse that I'm too busy and it's too hard. No, you stop watching TV. No, stop going to McDonald's. No, stop Great wasting point. your time at the strip club and on internet porn. You know what I mean? Like get out into the world and move your body. So I think a little bit is just about like just bucking up and doing it. But I do, I do understand people have busy lives um, and stressful lives and children and families are expensive. So you got to work it into your life in a healthy way right. as well. Um, Is there you know, any sort of equipment that you use that, to help you to manage your time or like any? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question. So I, I think too, um, having a few things laying around the house that you can pop on and do a couple of sets real quick and then be on your day. For instance, if I'm an extremely busy businessman, I wake up at five. I got to be at work at 630. I don't get home till eight at night. Okay. I'm probably not going to be able to go to the gym for two hours and then take that hour and a half long hike and right. take my 30 minute meditative breathwork yoga class. Like I, I won't have that luxury, but I do have 10 minutes in the morning before I need to do anything else. I may have a lunch break at work and I may have a little time hanging out with my kids at the end of the day. So do something during those times. Something's better than nothing anything's better than nothing. Um, but tools, kettlebells, dumbbells, my favorite tool is gymnastics rings. You can hang them anywhere, you know, in a park from a basketball hoop in your garage. Yeah. And they're very effective at, at lots of different things. So I think really it's just about kind of organizing, having some things around and set up to make it easier. And, be and creative. sometimes you got to break the mold. Exactly. Be creative. It, yeah. Working out and moving doesn't mean hire a personal trainer, go to the gym, and spend 1.5 hours working out. It means it means be a human. Pick things yeah. up, lift them above your head, run, jump, wrestle, move. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that that's a pretty good answer for if people that are not sure how to exercise at all or how to fit it in their schedule. So we covered that topic. Now another topic that um, I get quite a bit. I'm sure you do get a lot about this as well. Uh, creams, steroids. UVB light, the brush, like what do you yeah. use? What do you need? My, my main tools, and this is what I kind of do with my clients is, um, I think daily dry brushing can be super effective. The, the main question I get there is, what about my flared up areas? It hurts to dry brush them. Don't, then don't dry brush them. So I actually, to add to that point, I actually, once I watched a video about the dry brushing, I was like, well, let me give it a try. Let me buy that brush. Bought the brush, uh, I think it was like 10 bucks or whatnot on AliExpress yeah. or something like that. And mm -hmm. as soon as I got the brush, it was almost a placebo effect. Before I even started to use it, my skin started to improve. And all those flaky, dry areas kind of went away. So I wasn't sure if I should brush it or not. And you didn't have a video covering that just yet about what happens when the skin gets better. What do you do with a brush? Mm -hmm. So 
I didn't know if I should continue using it. I actually may, maybe used it once just to give mm -hmm. it a try. Didn't, personally, for me, I didn't see anything really affecting. Right. So I kind of stopped and I switched back to what seemed to work, which was the UVB light. Yeah, UV, I, I think you I can't even light. connect if it actually works or not. I just think maybe it's psychological that this light yeah. is going to help. Yeah, I think anytime you start to focus on the solution, there's a huge emotional and placebo effect to healing. Yeah. You, have to, you have to be willing to open the door to say, I can heal and I will heal and I believe that. Yep. If you don't, if you don't believe you're nothing's going to happen um, right. with dry brushing. And this is kind of also a, a misinformed thing in our community. When you dry brush, you're not going to see results. It's not going to affect the surface of your skin that drastically. What the dry brush purpose is, is to move manually your lymphatic. Um, and so it's the consistency and moving your lymph that then allows the lymph to start to circulate on its own, um, detox, eliminate different things that are impure calcification. Um, and so that's why I tell people, if you have a flare up, don't do the flare up, just do your other parts of your body. And also you gotta, you gotta take in mind that all the advice, um, everything that we're explaining is somewhat anecdotal and very personalized, like the diet. Take, take what we're saying, listen to us, but don't believe anything. Find out yourself. Okay, yeah. Rob said dry brush. I'll try it. Well, dry brushing sucks, like for you. And it's not doing too much. I'll go for light therapy. I don't I, think it sucks. I just think it wasn't effective or, as much for me. Right. Not, and, and I'm saying you made a good decision. You, you tried it. Maybe it wasn't the greatest thing. Cool. You moved on, tried something else. And, oh, this light therapy feels like it's doing something. Stick with it. So you, yeah. you have to be a little bit experimental. You have to make it clear for the viewers that light therapy is just cosmetics. It's actually not fixing the issue. It's just like putting a bandaid on a broken leg for now. Right. It's, it's, it's a tool. It's not going to heal you, but it can, it can help with the symptoms for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So creams, steroids, like what do you use? I don't, I was using, uh, I kind of got lucky. Um, the way that they smelled and the way that they felt on my body, just, I didn't like it. So I didn't fall into really abusing steroid creams too much until basically the last six months before our, I gave up and just said, I got to figure this out in a different way. From that, I was using a pretty strong cortisone cream um, daily, multiple times. I, think on I was my, using something like that too. Yeah, it was, appeared to help, but it was peeling your skin layers as far as I understand. Yeah, mine, it kind of knocked down the redness, um, but it left my face kind of like a weird color um, and very greasy. And I did start to have the, the thinning of the skin, like yeah. all along my T-zone. Um, and uh, afterwards, I did have to go through TSW. And I did have a little what we call red face syndrome. What's um, for, TSW for those of you that have no idea what that is? Um, that is topical steroid withdrawal. So when you start taking steroid creams, just like any drug, your body starts to rely upon it right. to be the inflammatory dispenser rather than your immune system. Once that happens and your body's relying on the steroids, well, um, it's, it's going to have to then recover that hormonal response before it can even start to heal. So when you use steroid creams and then you get off them, you have to actually go through a withdrawal period and heal from that before the healing of everything else kind of starts yeah. to happen. The, the healing happens all at the same time, but you really you kind of got to get over one before the, the skin's going to heal fully. So why do you think uh, when we go to dermatologists, doctor, family doctors, whatever, and they all recommend methotroxide, like, which is a big drug I heard in the industry. Uh, they offer like, here's another steroid cream. Here's another cream to use, like prescription, mm -hmm. right? Why are they not giving the advice that we're talking about right here? Like figure it out, like try something new, diet, exercise. This is like the easy stuff that maybe it's not proven to help. There's no research specifically saying this will help. But clearly, there's enough people out there vouching for it. Yeah, I think, I think good dermatologists and doctors will address that and, and talk about that. But I think really the, the main issue goes back to um, the whole pathology uh, of what they study. You know, they study a book that was written by drug companies, and they call that medicine. Um, to me, I call that being a drug dealer. Um, and In a legal when you way. Come, yeah, legal drug dealer. And when you come to a dermatologist, um, what they've learned and what they're 
their teachers have told them and what they believe is that uh, diet doesn't do that much. Maybe it kind of can affect things kind of, but you're going to be having this disease forever. I've heard this one many times. Yeah. is to deal with the symptoms and these drugs can help the symptoms in certain ways and yeah there's side effects and we won't talk much about those but your only chance is to come back every month and do a visit and have me you know do some tests on your skin charge you a lot of money and then buy the drugs from me for the rest of your life to me that sounds like a really smart business plan and not a it, it shouldn't be called the medical field medical mm -hmm. field when it started was men who learned about the body or women and they would go into people's houses and most of the time they'd say okay you need to eat this differently this lifestyle stuff is going on maybe a little aspirin and give it a month or two and we'll see where we're at it was personalized it was yeah. it was it was real and then of course business and industry got a hold of it and surgeries and specialty operations and drugs are now running the show um i don't have a lot of uh, faith or trust in the medical system for people like us. Now, if I break my leg, yeah, of course, I'll go to the doctor. You know, if, if I get Corona, okay, I'll go to the doctor. But, um, you, you know, lucky enough to get to see a doctor at this point. Right, exactly. But for skin disease, I, I think that at best, you're going to find a dermatologist or a doctor who will say, maybe it has some stuff to do with your food. I heard this diet might work. Try it, but also take these drugs. Um, and I, I've never really found anyone who's healed taking drugs, just, yeah, just maybe temporarily nasty symptoms. To anything. Yeah, exactly. So I actually, a while back, I went to a natu naturopath uh, to mm -hmm. do an allergy test. And they took my blood, ran it through their machine, and a couple of weeks later, I got a report. And it was actually quite interesting to see how my inner system, like it was all broken down. Red meat wasn't a red flag. Uh, there was like, onions that were in a red flag the things that i would normally would consume maybe not red meat as much but things that like avocado which is something i like to do every morning was somewhat in that void area have you done any of those tests before yeah i've i did a, a lot of those tests i spent i spent a lot of money trying to figure it out um, medically first um, yeah. all the money i had and the funny thing is i did um, both saliva blood and skin prick testing and every single time i did a different test with a different doctor i had new and different things um that were in so the red was that ever overlapping the there were some things overlapping but most of the time it was like this new i this was like this new new stuff um so that that kind of was like that didn't ever make any sense if, if you truly have something that is an allergy um you, it should stay uniform. You know what I mean? It didn't matter what test you're saying. You they might be fixing up and changing the reports a little. It's not authentic. I don't think that they're going so far as to doing that. But what I think is that the reports and the testing is very inconclusive. It's kind of guesswork. Um, okay. Also, they don't ever really understand true pathology. So if I'm eating a diet that has 5,000 different foods in it, and I've eaten a hundred different foods in the past three days or past week. And then you test my blood. Right. Well, all of those nutrients are combined. Um, and your body doesn't separate them and say, well, that's a potato and this is corn and that's meat. That makes sense. Um, your blood will be affected by what you ate. So, right. And, and did you take the test after fasting? Did you take the test after no. eating McDonald's? Did you take the test after having a coffee? Every, everything will change your body's alchemy. So, um, and the same thing has been true for a lot of my clients. They get tested a couple of times from different doctors, different outcomes. And, you know, a lot of the foods that were on that list for me, I eat them all the time. Um, potatoes were like a top thing for me um, not to eat. You're very, very inflammatory from potatoes. The year that I healed my skin, the potatoes and sweet potatoes were one of my staple carbohydrates. I ate tons of them daily almost a thousand calories of potatoes a day Do you still do that? Uh, no i don't i don't eat hardly any um any carbohydrates at all right now interesting yeah i'm starting to notice for myself too i, I can't point it at 100 percent just yet but every time i have mashed potatoes or just fries or whatever i notice something is going on mm -hmm. so i'm going to give it a try cut out potatoes for like a month and see if that makes a difference but that's an yeah. interesting point they brought up because you said that affected you before yeah
Is there anything else that you've cut out recently that you're giving a try right now? My, my kind of path is like I'm the guinea pig and I experiment on myself and then I refine the data or I refine from the data. Right now, um, my diet is probably pretty similar to what it's been on my channel for the past two years. Okay. Um, but previous to that, obviously, there was a big switch. Went from high carb, low fat vegan to keto to carnivore to now just a refined version of carnivore diet. And my, my diet's super simple. I eat um, all the organ meats. I eat fish. I eat a lot of beef. I eat whatever wild caught meats I can. Um, the newest probably thing is over the past year has been adding goat butter, which has been, um, I was like, this may not work at all, but it's working amazingly. And with the experimenting with my clients, the goat butter has been really awesome. So just to clarify, you're eating a bunch of meats, fish, the goat butter, mm -hmm. what else? That's it? So a lot of eggs, egg yolks, pastured, um, a little raw honey, um, a few berries and pears here and there. Um, so and no vegetables really, like no carbs? I do a little green juice here and there, celery juice here and there. Um, you know, if, if there's a little garnish in my dish, I don't really care. It's not like I'm, I'm, I'm too worried about a little lettuce or something. Right. Um, I'll have a salad once in a great while. Um, and you know, that, Don't you miss all the nutrients from the salads and the vegetables and all that? There isn't any nutrients in Good. vegetables that you – need it's all micronutrients in, in my opinion the reason the vegan diet works so well is because it's catabolic in nature and there is no macros so you eat lettuce you're not getting any protein or any fat or any carbohydrates all you're getting is minerals and you're getting minerals that have the ability to cleanse you out um, so it, it does have a, a pretty strong catabolic it takes away cells gets rid of stuff but as far as building and nourishing the body that's where the animal fats and proteins round things out and really have a place in this healing process for a lot of people and you know Michaela Peterson is probably the most famous person who who's talked about this is she did carnivore diet for a month everything healed then she started eating salads depression came back arthritis came back irritable bowel syndrome came back takes lettuce out everything's fine again you, so, never, you never heard a good story from eating a salad, let's put it this way. <laughs> so it's, it's, again, it kind of goes back to it's very individualized and it's going to be different for you. Where you start your diet, it may not be the same 15 years down the line or 10 years down the line. I've been, I've been healed for over eight years. So, you know, I've, yeah. I've had a lot of refinements that have, that have happened throughout that process. Well, and you don't, and you feel like obviously the meat diet and what you're eating right now is helping obviously the weight gain, like as far as muscle. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of my vegan days, I wasn't feeling good at all. Um, my hormones had tanked. Uh, my teeth had really gotten messed up. Despite yeah. I thought in your really, videos you were mentioning that. Yeah. Um, and, and doing everything quote unquote, right. All whole foods, you know, mm -hmm. food combining, seasonal eating, shopping locally, growing my own stuff. I did it all by the book. Um, and when I switched over to eating animal foods and really focusing on bioavailable animal foods, I gained 36 pounds of muscle in a year. Um, body fat didn't change, actually slightly dropped. Um, hair growth, like I'm a, I'm a bald dude and my hair grows so fast now. Energy? What? How about your energy? Energy was, was, um, it was noticeably different um, because I was finally getting the nourishment and nutrients that I was lacking in, um, especially the fats. So instantly my brain felt different in two ways, more clarity, more creativeness, but also, and I didn't even realize I was going through this, but I think I was kind of suffering from a very low level, almost depression. You know, not, not like, oh, I'm so sad and my life sucks, but just a little bit like everything's a little dull. Then when I started really getting the nutrients, things just got more vivid, um, more emotional, more appreciative. Um, wow. So it, it's had a drastic effect on me. Um, and I've had a lot of clients that have had a very similar run with it. That's very interesting. Because I hear that, you know, and I'm sure you've heard this before, when you eat meat, your digestive system works a lot harder. Therefore, your whole body gets more tired and like, you need to give it breaks. And that's why the whole vegan diet was such a great thing. But 
it's interesting how you put it in a different perspective. Yeah, I've, I've heard, I heard that same thing. And that was something that before I made my switch, I was like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking a risk. This is an experiment. Yeah. Um, but now talking to the humans I've been able to talk to, you know, I talk to um, Sean Baker on a pretty regular basis. Um, I have a lot of friends who are been doing this longer than I have. Um, and, and I think a lot of what you hear anecdotally put out there by the vegan community is, is just kind of that it's anecdotal stuff. Um, especially when it comes to like the digestion of meat and what that does in your body. Let's, let's put it this way. Um, when you eat plant foods, you're eating a mechanism that has poison in it across the board. Plants don't want to be eaten. They want to plant their seeds in the ground and grow. They are a living organism. Um, kale. And also how they're raised too. I'm assuming chemicals are being used quite a bit. Right. But every, every plant has a defense mechanism. Yeah. You know, um, that's why when you eat wild plants, you know, everyone knows you can eat some herbs, eat the wrong mushroom, you die. Um, every plant has biotoxins in them. That's how they survive bugs and bacteria and yeah. fungus. Yeah. That's also why they elicit catabolism in our bodies and help us cleanse and detox. Mm -hmm. So every time you eat a plant, it's like taking a medicine or eating an herb. It elicits a response in your body that's called overcompensation. Overcompensation means you get it's like when you get a flu shot you get a little flu shot enough for your body goes oh i'm a little sick but now I'll overcompensate and yeah, heal yeah. And be stronger that's what plant foods are so what happens to most people when they go from any diet to eating a ton of fruit and a ton of vegetables and just kind of like mostly vegan diet they poop and they poop a lot um and they think Oh, now I'm healthy. I'm pooping five times a day. I'm pooping three times a day. I'm pooping six times a day. Your body doesn't want to do that. And if you're pooping out big logs of food, guess what your body didn't do? It didn't use it. Yeah. Because if your body did absorb it, it wouldn't. Have, yeah, exactly. So when you are eating beans and rice and corn and salads and you poop the next day and you can see all that in your food, you didn't get a single anything from that. Now, I can eat five pounds of meat and the next day I poop a little rabbit turd. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm constipated. It means my body actually assimilated all of those nutrients. Um, here's the proof. Eat cabbage, eat beans, eat rice and eat a lot of them and then see what your belly looks like. Bloop. Every time, even if you ferment them and soak them and wash them and do all the little tricks, everyone knows you eat a lot of plant foods and you get bloated, you get a little gassy, um, it's just kind of par for the course. Now I can literally eat five pounds of steak right now and my belly won't look any different. I'll still have a six pack. I won't be bloated. It won't even feel like I ate anything. Um, for me, that's all the proof I need for what digests better. Um, how do you feel after you eat burpy, farty, gassy, eh, a little lethargic, or do you feel like you ate nothing and you now have fuel? Interesting. Okay. And I guess the question that uh, we'll wrap up everything here too. Do you have cheat days? It's a good question. So um, I have had cheat days. Um, we well, just go most, full on chocolate chips, whatever. Yeah, I've uh, and that was not not like cheat days, like my pre healing days. But I've had some times where I'm like, I'm going to eat whatever I want and see what happens. Um, more as the experiment. Yeah. Um, and nothing ever happens. Um, obviously, if you keep that up, it's gonna, it's gonna yeah. put things into a bad place. But I, I tend to not need to cheat because within my diet, I know where my wiggle room is. And for instance, I, I posted a video a couple of days ago, of what I ate today video with my cheat meal. And my cheat meal was a uh, sparkling water with vanilla flavoring mixed with raw full fat cream um and so for me those both of those foods have nothing in them that i can't have sure. um a little too much cream that day yeah i don't want to eat 16 ounces of raw cream daily um but you know I'm, I'm able to do that once in a while and understand that that is a fun thing to eat. It feels like I'm cheating with ice cream or the worst food ever. And it has no, no bad effect. And that, honestly, that's really what I try to instill 
with the people that I work with and on my channel, you have to know where your wiggle room is because you're a human being. And at some yeah. point you're going to want to eat something that just tastes wonderful, period. And I find that uh, the wiggle room you're talking about, I kinda, you kind of know where your limits are. Yeah. You know that if you've been good for about a month and you're just going to have a couple snacks, maybe some chocolate, maybe a drink with a friend, that's probably not going to be the cause of the flare up. But if it is, then you know now. Right. Yeah, it, it, it could be for sure. And I think too, it's also, where are you in your healing journey? If I'm someone who's just starting off and what I mean by just starting off is in within your first year of trying to heal, I wouldn't really mess around with too much because you, you're just, you're not going to get any reads from your biomarkers. You're just going to be kind of guessing. And the biggest part, and you could probably attest to this, um, you got to be consistent in the beginning, really consistent um, to see the changes happen and not just consistent for a week or two weeks or two months or three months. It's going to take probably a little bit more discipline than you've ever had to do. I know for me, man, um, I was a, not a disciplined person at all besides sports. I was disciplined, yeah. practicing, and that's it. My diet, my lifestyle was just total, no discipline at all. Even when I was you know, a scholarship athlete in, in college, I didn't have any discipline to go to class. I didn't study. Screw that. I'm going to party and play ball. So it, it kind of took a mind shift for me to, to say, okay, I actually got to not do cheat meals for a while. And then it, it kind of became, I didn't really need them. I kind of got over it because I was eating food that tasted good. And like I said, I knew my wiggle room. Even when I was vegan, I knew, okay, I can go get a bunch of mangoes and a bunch of cotton candy grapes and, you know, some quinoa and some hemp seeds and a little raw honey. And yeah. that, that was like, whoa, that's delicious. So you got to learn, learn your tricks. Cool. Well, uh, let's wrap it up because I know you got to go. I have a meeting coming up as well. But I want to do a takeaway for the whole video for those that actually watched this far. If there's cool. like your two cents of what you want to throw as a suggestion, whether it's the coronavirus, whether it's the overall psoriasis, eczema journey, what would that be? Honestly, and this is something I repeat constantly, uh, like a broken record. If you're going to heal your skin and you're going to keep it healed, two things have to happen. One, figure out your diet in your own way personally. Maybe it will be plant-based. Maybe it will be carnivore. It might be somewhere in between. But you have to take that journey, figure out your food, heal your gut. Um, and then secondly, you really do have to address the autonomic nervous system directly through exercise, through cleansing, through movement, and through things like ice baths and breath work. If you do those two things and you're consistent with them long enough, you'll make a lot of progress and you'll be on the path to healing. If you don't, um, I think that you're going to be spinning your wheels forever. So I, I hope everyone just gets on that tip of, I'll figure out what works for me diet wise and I'll address my autonomic nervous system and, and kind of keep it simple. Man, I'm, I'm just happy to hear that most of the things that I preach on my channel for the most part for my experiments are in line with what you just said for the most part. Um, there are things that I can of course improve on, but most of the things are in line. So I'm happy with that. Cool. But uh, Hey man, I really, really appreciate your time just like spending, um, sharing all that knowledge with the community. And uh, I believe this is one of the most valuable videos that I'll be posting. So, awesome, man. Uh, yeah, like, uh, is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap it up? Sure. I mean, just I appreciate you having me on. It's always nice to talk shop with uh, other people who are in the industry and, and kind of really striving to put good info out into the community. Um, for anyone that's kind of looking for more info from me, my Instagram is Stuart Rob Stewart. Yeah, I'll um, have it in the description as well. Cool. And my, my website's holistichealthactivation.com and my YouTube channel is, you know, most, most people in the community already know it, but yeah. just Rob Stewart, R-O-B-S-T-U-E-R-T. Um, there's not and that I wish many of us out there. There's only you, maybe me, obviously. There's a few other guys that I noticed that do the channel and that's it, really. Yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> there's been, there was a few more. Yeah, um, they kind of died off, I noticed. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's like people will, start channels when they're healing and then they kind of relapse and you know it's it's a hard, about, it's a hard I guess. yeah once you're healed is what else do you talk about i healed exactly exactly so um, i've actually yeah, had somebody question the fact that i don't even have psoriasis and i was like hey man i wish you're right 
I've gotten that too. I've had people say, oh, you just had a little rash on your face. Um, you know, and there's always going to be haters out there. That's a good um, thing. That means you're, you're doing something good if you have haters, right? Oh, man. I, I have, I have a, my comment sections are pretty hilarious. And I, I, I don't take down all of them. But if it's abusive or just sure, yeah. too distracting, I'll, I usually will just erase them, block the person. But there's <laughs> some of my videos. Like if you look at my original Salt Flush video, the comment section is hilarious. Like. It's pretty great. <laughs> I'm sure me, you and I are inviting people to comment below and go as hard as you want about the fact that we both don't have any skin issues right now. Well, I mean, exactly. I have a little bit, if you can see, but you look pretty clean there. So. Yeah, I've, I've been really lucky. I, I, for me, I haven't had a flare up. I haven't had a, a like a eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, rosacea, rash -ish type of thing in eight years. Um, I'll get a zit here and there. I'll get regular skin stuff pop up sure. here and there some dry skin whatever yeah. but um yeah they, they, to, to be healed and to kind of you know i used to wake up every morning um rush to the mirror and look at all my different spots and oh they're bigger they're smaller and, and just inner stress right you, oh man just freaking out so yeah. i feel blessed to be not there anymore and the whole reason i i do what i do is because i want people like you and everyone else out there to experience a life of not being skin diseased of course yeah that's yeah. one of the worst things that we were blessed with but it has its own benefits too we're disciplined we're eating healthy so we're hitting other areas that most people don't exactly exactly awesome man well i appreciate your time i'll let you go and i'll see you on the youtube channel i'm sure we'll talk again all right dan thanks for having me on man okay take care